Hey, listen, just because y'all are seated doesn't mean that God's, God's not moving in the house. Y'all know that, right? God's still here. God's still doing his thing. Um, so I love, thank you so much. So I love, this is a beast, isn't it? So I love um, what, uh, what one of our sisters in the church just did. Um, she came up to me and she said, hey, Nate, she said, I really feel impressed with the Lord. That the Lord's laid this on my heart and I just want to, you know, submit it to you. And, um, and, and I said, yes, in my spirit, I said, yes. And so the message that she felt like the Lord laid on her heart was she said so many times we want to give God the inward, that we want to give God the posture of surrender. But if we want to admit that, if we want to acknowledge that, so many times it also begins with the posture of physical submission as well, too. And then that's why when we worship, we, we lift our hands and surrender. And that's why even sometimes people get down on their hands and their knees and they come to the altar just so that way they can posture them, themselves physically so that way spiritually they're there as well, too. So listen, just as a sign of surrender, let's, let's go and let's do that right now because I don't know if you sense it, but I really do believe that, that God wants to work in our midst, that God wants to do something. Amen? So if you believe that, let's just go ahead and just lift up our hands right now just as a sign of surrender. And let's just, again, just surrender this time to the Lord and just what he would have. Father, we love you. And Father, we surrender, Father, everything to you, Jesus. God, not just our time here on Sunday morning, not just, Father, just the, the brief time, God, that we've had to sing these songs, but Father, we lift up our hands, God, as a sign of surrender, and we say, Holy Spirit, we want you to be the Lord of all, because as the old saying goes, if you're not Lord of all, then you're not Lord at all. And Jesus, we want you to be Lord over all of our lives. We want you to be the Lord over our finances. We want you to be the Lord over our families. We want you to be the Lord over my mind. We want you to be the Lord over what we say. We want you to be the Lord of our families, of our marriages, Father. We want you to be the Lord of all. And so, Father, we just surrender and we lift up our hands, God, saying, Holy Spirit, please come in because we surrender everything to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And we just believe that God's not done yet. And so I don't even encourage you guys that as you guys are our home, as you guys are worshiping in the car, as you guys are doing all those, you know, whatever it is that you do throughout the day, that, that let's continue to posture ourselves in an attitude of, of surrender. So, um, and listen, before we jump in, I just wanted to uh, just reiterate a couple of things. Um, one, um, I just want to say that Pastor Carl said it earlier, but listen, this coming Friday night, we're having our all-out family worship day where we're going to come together as a family of Christ and we're going to worship God. And, and that's important for two reasons. Number one, because um, this will be the first time since in, in September is when we first multiplied out to two services. So there's the 9 a.m. and then there's our other, you know, split personality that comes in at the 11 a.m. And so we have two different sides of us. And so there hasn't been that collective time together. And so uh, this coming Friday will be a time, the first time that we've done that, you know, since we've multiplied out, that we can come together corporately and worship God together in unity together, you know, just as one body. So I just want to encourage you for that. And then the other thing too, the reason why it's important is, uh, listen, I know it's not January, we're, we're now in February. In fact, February the excuse me, the seventh. And so, uh, but we're still up top. We're still at the beginning of the year. And, and man, what an awesome way to say at the beginning of the year, Jesus, we want this year to be dedicated to you. Jesus, we want to set the pace that this year we want to focus our mind and our energy and our emotion that, to, that God, this year, 2021, we want to focus on you. And then so what an awesome way to do that then by coming together as the family of Christ this coming Friday. And then after that, you know, just worshiping together. So uh, I just want to encourage you to do that. And then also I just want to give a brief shout out. Uh, that that this coming week is going to be the second week that our life groups uh, are gonna are gonna happen. And so, if you haven't uh, been involved in a life group yet, I want to let you know there's an awesome life group. Even though we have people who are on the wait list, there's still an awesome life group that's open, and that's our online life group. And so, I know that we all want to be you know in physical you know connection with one another. But in the meantime, listen, don't don't have no community. In the meantime, have some community. And so I just want to encourage you that we have a young adults life group that's still open and we have an online life group that's still open. So you definitely want to sign up for that. Um, well, well, this morning, what I want to do is I want to talk to us um, just on a different topic. We were supposed to preach. I was supposed to preach on a different topic this morning. But then uh, I just felt like the Lord just changed my heart these past couple of days. And uh, it was interesting because Pastor Carl came up to me this morning. He said, hey, Nate, you ready for this morning? And, uh, and he said, man, you're always ready, aren't you? And I said, not today, man. And uh, he said, what does that mean? And I said, well, 
I said, I really don't feel concrete about what's going to happen. I said, but I feel concrete about the fact that the Lord's going to lead me and direct me as we continue on. And so I said, well, you see what happens, man. It's going to be a, it's going to be a party today. So uh, y'all hold on, man. And um, man, just love the fact that you guys are here. In fact, let me just say this real quick. Let me step out and say, man, welcome to everybody here. And welcome to our extended family who are joining us online. And I'm just really happy to see you guys. I just feel weird. I feel happy to see you guys, because last week I wasn't able to see most of you, um, and then today too I got a special treat that I was able to see uh, just some people who are dear to me. Um, uh, you know, just one of them real briefly is, you know, I got my adopted aunt and uncle here with us too, uh, but then also we also have one of the guys who used to serve with me on youth staff, Corey Grove. I just saw him up on stage. I just needed to come up and say what's up to him, but uh, it's funny because when, when he served on the youth team with me, uh, every Thanksgiving, we, we used to, this is funny, this is one of the stories that stick out to me about Corey. Um, we used to do what we called the turkey bowl, where we would play football against another youth group in town. And, and so we came together, and man, we, you already know who won, okay? We, we destroyed them. Christian Life, COC, that's what's up, okay? Um, just kidding, we didn't destroy them because some of you might be watching online, some of you might come from there. I'm sorry. Ugh. But truth is the truth. Anyway, so with that being said, though, uh, it was funny because uh, the other team, they had... Uh, like some high school football player who thought he was all that. And, and the whole time, Corey was on him. Corey guarded him. And then so this guy at the end of the game looked at Corey and said, man, you're really good. He said, you play ball? And then Corey looked up and was like, yeah, I play soccer. <laughs> and it was like the dude was so demoralized that, that Corey said soccer. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, bro. So anyway, uh, Corey, I love you, man. Um, so anyway, um, uh, today what I want to talk to us about is, is, is the topic of, uh, of integrity, of intentional integrity. Everybody say integrity. Integrity. I want to talk to us today about integrity. Um, so if you have your Bibles, before we, before we jump in, let's go ahead and open up to Genesis chapter 39, and we're going to read verses 2 to 12. Genesis chapter 39, we're going to read verses 2 to 12 together, and the version that I'm reading from is the NLT. But let's go ahead and let's read, and then after that we can continue on. Uh, starting here at verse 2, chapter 39, it says this. It says, now that the Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. So this pleased Potiphar. So he made Joseph his personal attendant. He basically promoted Joseph. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's house for Joseph's sake. All his household affairs ran smoothly and his crops and livestock flourished. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he did not worry about a thing except what kind of food to eat. Joseph was very handsome and well-built. Let me just pause right there. Joseph was very handsome and, and well-built. What a terrible problem to have, right? He was handsome and, and well-built. Some of you guys, anybody here feel like you can relate to that problem? Anybody here feel like, amen, that's me? You have that problem, Reuben? I hear you. Anybody else feel like that, that I just have that problem? Some of you are laughing right now. Don't look at your husband's ladies and say, I wish. Yeah, I, know, I know some of you right now. Don't do that. But he had a problem. He was, he was handsome and he was well built. And so Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. And come and sleep with me, she demanded. But Joseph refused. Look, he told her. He said, you're crazy. My master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held nothing back from me except you because you are his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. Everybody say against God. Against God. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day. But he refused to sleep with her. And he kept out of her way as much as possible. Then one day. Everybody say one day. Then one day. However, no one else was around. When he went in to do his work, she came and grabbed him by his cloak. Demanding. How many of you guys know that sin will wait for you and will pounce on you at the most opportune time? That sin is aggressive. She came and she grabbed him by his cloak, demanding, come on, sleep with me. 
But Joseph tore himself away, but he left his cloak in her hand as he ran from the house. And again, today, I want to talk to us on the topic of intentional integrity, intentional integrity. Let's go and let's, let's pray. Father, we welcome you in this place. We know that you're already here. And uh, Father, as we, uh, God, go through your word, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would highlight for us, God, the things that you would, God, want to illuminate in our lives uh, Father, I don't only pray, God, for the preaching of your word, but, Father, I pray, God, for the hearts, for the soil that's going to be receiving it, Father, myself included. Lord, I pray that you would make our hearts good soil for the seed, God, that's going to be planted today, God, that may we not only be hearers of your word, but may your seed, God, take root, deep root within our hearts, and may we be doers of your word as well. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Everyone said amen, amen, amen. So, um, before I start, I just want to ask somebody to help me out with a favor real quickly. This is some, some toys I brought from the house, right? Ethan Rosenberry, friend center, right? Come on up here, brother, real quick. Hey, come on up here, man. Hey, do me a favor. Yeah, y'all can clap for Ethan. Ethan's awesome. For you, for you parents of, of young kids, you guys see Ethan most Sundays. He checks our kids in. Ethan, can you do me a favor? And with these, with these mega blocks... Right with these mega blocks, can you build me like the tallest tower that you could possibly build me? Okay, so so go ahead and, and you can get get started on that. So, um, a lot of you guys know that um, it's not rocket science, bro. You you're good, man. You perfect. There you go. Um, he's dude, he's into it right now. If you're watching, him, like dude is thinking. Um, so so if you're if you're a parent with multiple kids, you've probably experienced this. But uh, I have two girls, seven and and three, and both of them act like they're going on thirteen. It's ridiculous. But but my youngest son, uh, but my youngest, he you know is my son. He just turned one this past December, and it's crazy to me how different like the son is from the girls. Like like you know that they're different, obviously. But it's crazy, though, how different your kids are, and especially when they're boy and girl. Like, it's just crazy. And so uh, I remember, you know, not that long ago, maybe about even like last week, uh, we were downstairs in my basement. And that's where the girls have their Barbies and they have their Barbie dream house that my mom got them because my mom loves to spoil them. Thank you so much for that, mom. I have so many Barbies. I don't know what to do with it. But, but, but they were playing Barbies, and it was funny because I was down there with them, and I had Caden. And, and all of a sudden, Caden came in, and he, and he picked up the Barbie. And, this, you know, the girls were like, hi, my name's Barbie, and what's your name? Do you want to play? Do you want to go and you do gymnastics? And, you know, they started role-playing like that. And then my son comes up, and he picks up a Barbie, and he goes, Arr! <laughs> Arr, Arr, And he starts <laughs> bouncing it around like it's some sort of monster. And then some of my girls look at him, and with their Barbie dolls, they're like, you're weird. Like, why are you doing that? And then Katie was just like, Arr! And it's just funny how, how, like, how different they are, right? Um, so it's funny because uh, one of the things that my kids love to play is, is, is you know, we, we bust out the mega blocks every now and then. And, and so what happens is, is that um, the girls, they love, you know, they love playing with Caden. So what happens is that the girls will try to build like the, the tallest tower they could possibly build. They'll build it up. And, and you know what happens whenever a young toddler, especially if he's a boy, sees a tower that's being built. Right. What does he what does he do? Exactly. He destroys it. He knocks it down. And then so they're there, they're building, they're like, oh my gosh, they're like, mom, dad, look at my castle, it's being built up. And I'm like, oh, baby, that's so cute. And so they're building it up, and all of a sudden, Kenan will come over, and he'll go, ah, 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 ah. and he'll start knocking, don't worry, bro, I'm not going to knock it down. But he'll come over, and he'll be like, ah, and he'll start knocking it down, and then Sadie will be like, mm, Kaden, stop. And then Sophie will be like, Kaden, that's very rude, okay, you need to stop doing that. And it's just funny, man. And then so Kaden will just, just frustrate them when they're building puzzles, right? When they're building puzzles, you know, they'll have it all laid out. And then Kaden will come over and he'll go, ah, and then he'll start messing up all the puzzles like this. He's just a destroyer. And then so, so when it comes to the blocks, my, my wife, she's, she's, she's awesome. She's creative and she's quick. And so she goes, hey, listen, girls, instead of you getting frustrated, why don't we play a game? Why don't we play a game that, that who can build the tallest tower before Caden comes and knocks it over? And so Sadie and Caden, I mean, Sadie and Sophie are like, oh, okay, yeah. So they start building this, this, these, these big, awesome, awesome towers. And um, it's looking good, man. You're looking real good, bro. It's kind of skinny, though. It's like lopsided a little bit. There's like one side that's thick, and then it gets skinnier as it goes up. I mean, but it's all good, though. 
Yeah, yeah, it's real skinny. Kind of looks like Zach Stauk a little bit. Just reminds me of just the form. But anyway, so like, um, it, it's, so, so they start building it, right? They start building it before Caden comes over and knocks it up. But what happens, though, is that as they're building it, they're trying to build up. They're trying to build. What happens, though, is that, is that as they're building it, what happens is, brother, this is good. You can stop right here. Everybody give it up for Ethan real quickly. Thank you, Ethan. What happens, though, is that as they're building it up, they're trying to make it so tall. But what happens, though, is that as they're building it up, they're not building it down. They're not making it secure. And so as they're building it up, they'll, they'll do all sorts of nonsense where they'll try to go like this, and then they'll try to, like, bring it over some more like this, and then they'll start, like, venturing out this way, and then sooner before you know it, it just starts to knock over just a little bit, right? And they're like, mm! So then, like, they get it up again, and then they're like, they keep building it, they keep going it up, but then what happens is then is that it knocks over again. So they'll, they'll again, they'll come over, and they'll start building it up, and they're like, Dad, this isn't working, and they get so frustrated, and then they're like, but see, look, I'm trying to build, but then it comes crashing down. And, like, the whole time, I'm like, baby, that's because you're not building it wide. Like, you need a, you need a firm foundation. You need to just, just make it big. And so, listen, I said, before you build up, you, you, need, to, you, you need to first, like, build it in. You need to build it down. You need, to, you need to build a bigger foundation. You need to build it real good on the bottom. That way, as it grows and as it gets taller, like, like you have the firm foundation that as it gets taller, that it's not going to be easily knocked over. It's not going to be easily frustrated. It's not going to be easily knocked down. You need to just build it wide before you build it up. And so as they're building it, I'm like, you know, I'm trying to be a good dad. And I'm like lifting this piece up and I'm shoving a piece in there. And then I'm lifting that piece up and I'm shoving a piece in there because I'm trying to tell them, listen, it, yes, yes, I want you to build up, but don't just build up. You, you got to build, you got to build down. Now, don't just build out. You, you, you got to build in. You got to build within. You got to build the inside. You got to build the infrastructure to support the growth that you want to see. You got to build the you got to build the infrastructure to support the growth that you want to see. And so what you do is is you start building up the bottom and then you shove it in there and then you build it up that way it can be strong as it continues to grow. You got to be strong as it continues to grow. And uh, as as their dad, I want them to build it up. But if I want them to build it up, I've also got to teach them that not only do you need to build up, but you've got to build it down. You've got to build it from within to support the growth that you want to see. You got to build within to support the growth that you want to see. And I wonder sometimes how many of us are, get wrapped up and get so busy in trying to build up and out that we first neglect to build within. I wonder sometimes how many of us get, get so busy trying to fulfill and trying to do that we get so wrapped up in building up and out that we don't ever take the time to first build the infrastructure on the inside that's needed to sustain the growth. See, see here's the thing is that well, when it comes to Christianity, right, it's, 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 we, we, we as believers, we, we focus on a few Bible verses, right? We focus on Jeremiah 29 11, where it says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. We, we focus on Ephesians 3.20 that says that God will do exceedingly above what we can think or imagine. We focus on Romans 12, 2, where it says that God's will for you, yes, God's will for you is good and it's pleasing and it's perfect. So we hear all that. We're like, yeah, Jeremiah 29, 11, if Ephesians 3, 23, God wants to do above exceedingly and imagine. Yeah, yeah Romans 12, 2, that, that God's will for us is good and pleasing, perfect. So we start building and we start stacking and we start like, yeah, it's going to be awesome. God wants to do this. God wants to do that. And God's going to do this amazing thing. I'm going to start this nonprofit. And I'm going to start this ministry and I'm going to start this, this thing and I'm going to start this thing on one. Wednesday night, and I'm going to start this thing on Thursday night, and I'm going to start, and we start building, and we keep going, right? But before we do this, how many of us, I wonder how many of us build up and out at the expense of building within? 
That, that yes, listen, Jeremiah 29, 11 is good and it's true. Romans 12, 2, Ephesians 3, 20, all of that is well and good and it's true. But let's also not forget 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, where it says that God does not look at the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart. He looks at the inside. He looks at the integrity of what you have. And, and, and the reason why I feel like the Lord, you know, put this on my heart last minute is because I feel like 2021 is the year that, that God, God wants to do something good and big. I feel like for some of us in this room, and listen, I'm not throwing it out there. This isn't a prosperity gospel type thing. But, but what I honestly do feel in my heart, though, is that for February, 20, I mean, for the year 2021, for some of you, this is going to be the best year yet that you've ever experienced. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that this is going to be our best year yet. For some of us, this is going to be our best year yet. I, I receive that. But, but, but here's, here's what the Lord put on my heart is that, listen, if we're going to have the best year yet, if, if God's going to promote us, if God's going to make those dreams and those visions a reality that he's put in our hearts so long ago, if God's going to start building it up this year, if we want to experience the fullness of that, or if we want to sustain that, we can't only focus on the growth on the outside. We've got to focus on the growth on the inside. Because if the Lord gives us what we wanted, then if we don't have the infrastructure to sustain it, we're not going to experience it long term. And not only are we not going to experience it long term, we're going to lose it and maybe end up hurting ourselves even more in the process. Uh, let, let me give us a, a prime example. You know, uh, one of the things that the Lord's spoken over our, our church body through, through two different people probably more, is he's given us the word rapid expansion, right? The Lord's going to expand Christian Life Church. And listen, I'm all for that. That's awesome. The Lord's going to expand it. But, but, but here's the thing. So a lot of us here, we're waiting for it. We're saying, yes, God, bring the rapid growth. Bring the rapid expansion. Yes, Lord, bring it. But l l let me ask you this. If all of a sudden, 200 people walk through our doors, and let's say half of them got kids in the nursery, do you think we'll have enough infrastructure to sustain all those kids in our nursery? Are our system set up for that? If we had all of a sudden 50 people come through our doors and if all of them get saved on a Sunday morning, do we have the system in place, the infrastructure, the inside strength to sustain not only those 50 people, but to help them walk out their faith and continue to help them grow? Do we? Guys, I'm going to be honest with you, we, we don't yet. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that for yet. We don't yet. But, and so here's the thing is that the reason why God isn't bringing the increase yet is because we're not ready for it yet. Because if he were to bring the increase without the internal strength to sustain it, then guess what? We would all come tumbling down like the walls of Jericho. And so God wants to bring those things in your life. God wants to do the amazing, the miraculous. God wants to bring those things into your life. But unless you have the internal fortitude to sustain them, they're going to end up hurting you. The blessing then becomes a curse. And God's blessings aren't meant to be curses. So he's waiting on us to get ready on the inside before he brings the growth on the outside. That's what God wants to do. And so, so this morning, here's, here's, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. Is I want to talk to us then, if God is about the characters, if God is about growing the inside, if God is about growing our integrity, if, if that's what God is about first before he builds us out, then the question is then is how do we build our integrity? How do you practice building it? How do you, how do you grow it? Is it just something you're, you're born with? Is it just something that comes natural to you? And I want to give us a couple of things today from, from this account that we read, a couple of things that Joseph did to grow his integrity. Because, see, here's the thing is that when we look at the Bible, we have the advantage of hindsight. Like, we can look at it and be like, yeah, Joseph went through all that, but guess what? Two chapters later, he's like the ruler over all the world. But see, we have the hindsight of looking at that and saying, yeah, of course he, he's, he's going to go through that because he's about to become the ruler. But guess what? Joseph didn't know that. He didn't know that back then, but this was a test in order to get him to where God wanted him to be before he brought him to that place of promotion. See, some of us, we, we get mixed up when we think of anointing. See, anointing or being anointed isn't the same time as, isn't the same thing as being appointed because you could be anointed with the power and with the giftings of God, but just because you're anointed doesn't mean it's your appointed time. 
See, David was anointed when he was a shepherd boy ever before he fought Goliath. But years later, in fact, some theologians say decades later is when he actually became king. He was anointed, but he had to go through the testing process before he was appointed. And see, God wants to let you know today that he's anointed you, but he wants you to go through the testing before he appoints you. And so how do you get, how do you grow your integrity? How do we get there? How do we get to a place where, where God can look at us and say, yeah, 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 he, he's been through that. <laughs> he, he's been tried through the fire. He's grown his integrity. He's been faithful. You guys know that, that when we get to heaven, and, and it's funny to me that when we get to heaven, you know, the Lord isn't going to say, well done, my cool servant. <laughs> the Lord isn't going to say, well done, my servant who was a great communicator. Uh, well done, my servant who made lots of money. When we get to heaven, the Bible says that he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Faithfulness. And so let, let, let's dive into this before we, before we run out of time. But, but I want to look at this account from Joseph and talk about three things that I, I'm pulling out of that that I feel like if we can implement in our lives that will help us grow in our integrity today. All right? Amen. You guys with me? You guys good? Okay, so listen, if I preach something good, I need you guys to help me out, okay? Because I spent the past three years in Atlanta, Georgia, where it was like the South, and so people shouted you down. And then two years before that, I spent two years in Oklahoma, which is basically like the belt buckle of the Bible belt, where you get up on stage and people are saying, glory, hallelujah. And they start preaching, they start saying amen, and you're like, man, the preacher, you make a preacher feel good. So listen, I just need your help this morning because I'm here to tell you that us preachers, we're human too, okay? So if you like something you hear, I just need to hear you say amen. Can you say amen real quick? Amen. If you hear something good, also feel free to say the word preach it. Can you say preach it? Preach it. Okay, awesome. So if you feel like there's something, God, I just need you just to shout a brother down real quickly. So we're going to dive into this, okay? So the first thing that, that I draw out of this, and we're going to speed on here with, because of time, the first thing here that, that we're going to notice is this, is that the first thing that Joseph did is this, is this. Joseph said, it would be a great sin against God to do this sin, to sleep with you. So the first thing we've got to do is this, is we've got to make sure that we don't just make Jesus a priority, we've got to make Jesus pervasive. Don't just make Jesus a priority, make Jesus pervasive. So um, it, it, it's funny because um, I, I have a friend who, who just recently gave his heart to the Lord and, and he just shipped off to the military. But it was really cool because like, cause before that, he didn't grow up in the church. He went to church maybe once or twice. Uh, but then I had him over for a game night a couple of weeks ago. And during the game night, things got a little bit heated because we're just a little bit competitive. And then so things got a little bit heated. And so he did something to mess himself up. And then as soon as he did it, he said, oh, fudge. You don't know what, it, you don't know what he was saying, right? Okay. So, so just want to make sure that I don't have, you know, y'all aren't too churchy that you don't know what I'm talking about. So he said, oh, fudge. And then after that, he looked up and he was like, he saw me. And I was like, what? And then he goes, oh, Nate, I'm so sorry, man. And then he said, Oh, shiz biscuits. And I was like, and he said, oh, dude, I messed up again. And he said, I'm sorry. And he said, man, dear. And I was like, and it was funny because he kept getting frustrated that he was using these words, but because he was frustrated, he kept using those words. And it was just hilarious. And so we, man, we were just cracking up. And then so it was funny because then I joked with him later. I said, listen, man, you just gave your heart to the Lord. I said, you don't know the rules yet. You don't know the rules. It's okay. I said, okay. I said, now this dude, we had another guy over. I said, this dude, if he said that, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pouncing on him. But you don't know the rules yet. You can, you still got, you know, maybe about a week or so before you, you need to stop saying that, but it's okay. And um, it was funny because, 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 you know, he, because of my presence, he was uncomfortable saying that stuff because I was there. He was just a little bit, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. And, and what's funny though, is that like, you know, it, if I, were with, if I were with him throughout the rest of his, his week, throughout the rest of his day, I wonder how many more things would he be uncomfortable doing because of the fact of my presence being there with him. Like, like for example, if, if I were, thank you for that, amen, whoever said that. All right, so, so for example, if, 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 I were, if I were with you, uh, let me ask you the question. If I were with you at home, would you treat your spouse a little bit differently because I was there? If I were with you as you were yelling at your kids, would you yell at your kids or maybe talk differently to your kids because I was there? Or, 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 or if you were alone on the internet, right, on your laptop or on your phone, and I was there, would you 
not go to a couple of places that you normally go to because of the fact that I was there. Because my presence is not just priority where you saw me once, but it's pervasive. It's, it's always with you. And see, here's the thing is that though I cannot be with you guys always, we serve somebody greater who is always with you who is always next to you, who's always with you as you're coming and as you're going. We serve somebody who's with you as you're at your doctors, at your workplaces, in your cubicle. We serve somebody who's with you when you wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning, when you wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning. We serve somebody who's always with you, who's greater than me. And see, what happens is, though, is that for so many times, well-meaning Christians, we make God a priority. And that's not bad, but, par- but by priority, I mean we wake up and we pray. And then after that, we say amen, and we're done reading the Bible, and we close up the book. But then that's the only time we ever acknowledge God. We made him priority because he was one of the first things we did. But now that he's off our list, we forget all about him. See, Jesus doesn't just want to be priority. He wants to be pervasive. He wants you to talk with him. He wants you to communicate with him. As you're driving in the car by yourself, he wants you to talk with him. As that person is yelling at you, he wants you to know that he's right there with you. As you're, you know, going to work and as you're picking up the kids, as you're doing whatever it is that you're doing, God wants you to know that he is always with you. God just doesn't want you to be, God just doesn't want to be priority. God wants to be pervasive in your life. And Joseph, he realized that. He realized that God was always with him. So he said it would be a great sin against God. Why? Because he knew that God was right there. So listen, listen up, young man. God's with you when you open up that phone. You get on the internet. Listen up. God's with you when you're in that back room counting that money by yourself. God's with you in your thoughts that you think about other people. God's with you. God is always with you. Okay, so so second thing is this, and I promise I'm going to try to to hurry this up. The second thing that Joseph did in order to practice or in order to grow his integrity is this, is is in the last couple verses here, it says this, that, that, that she caught a hold of him. She grabbed him by the cloak, and she said, come and sleep with me. But Joseph tore himself away, but he left his cloak in her hand. The second thing that you've got to do if you want to grow your integrity is you've got to be willing to leave your cloak. You've got to be willing to leave your cloak. Um, Let me me get him on. Ethan, I already picked on you, Nolan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come up here, brother. Come up here, man. So, yeah, y'all can get up for Nolan. (laughs) Nolan said, clap for me. Let me take off my jacket because that was kind of like the cloak back then. Okay, so hold on to my hold on to my jacket real quickly. So so this is what happened. This is what happened. So Potiphar's wife got a hold of Joseph's cloak, right? And then she said, "Come and sleep with me." So if I'm Joseph, I'm like, "Yo, this is my cloak. Hey, hold on to that, bro. Hold on. You should, I, hold on to that." Okay. I know that you don't want to get a Cracker Barrel, but it'll still be there. Hold up. So so listen. So she held on to the cloak. And then she said, come and sleep with me. But if I were Joseph, I'd look at her and I'd be like, yo, this is my cloak. You got to let go. And then so they're, they're, they're in this like tug of war, right? And so what happens is though, is, is that, that, watch this. Let me ask you this question. Is the cloak sin? No, it's not sin. It's just something that I wear to keep me warm. And in fact, it's not a sin because everybody has it. She has a cloak. They have a cloak. You know, everybody has a cloak. And then so, so it's not a sin that this cloak is not sin at all. Let me ask you a question. Is watching PG-13 movies a sin? No, it's, it's, not a, it's not a sin. Is you talking to that girl or that guy, is that really a sin? No, no it's not. It's not a sin. You're just, just talking. Is having internet access on your phone or your laptop with you by your bed at 2 in the morning, is that a sin? No, those things, they're not sin, right? Everybody has that. Everybody has access to the internet. Is, is being on Instagram or Facebook 24-7, is that a sin? I don't know. No, not necessarily. Some of you are like, that's idolatry, Pastor Nate, because you're giving, okay, yeah, I get that. You win, okay, point, point to you. But not really. The Bible doesn't say anything about that. It's not sin. Well, watch this. Sin had a hold of that which was not sin, in order to get to Joseph. Sin had a hold of that which was not sin in order to get to Joseph. So listen, it's not a question of, is the thing that you have sin? Hold on, man, act like you got some strength. No, come on, bro, pull a little bit. So it's not a question of, is it sin? It's a question of, what's on the other side of that thing? It's not a question of, is the cloak sin? It's a question of, where does it eventually lead you? 
Yes, I get it that everybody has access to the internet on your phone, but where does it eventually lead you? Yes, I get it that you can talk to that guy, or you can talk to that girl, but let me ask you this, where does that conversation eventually lead you? Because in the moment right there that, that, that Joseph was, was tugging, he realized in that moment that he could not keep his cloak and fulfill the destiny that the Lord had for him at the same time. So what did Joseph do? Joseph just went ahead and just left his cloak behind and said, you can keep my cloak, but I'm going to keep pursuing the Lord. You can keep the cloak, but I'm going to keep my integrity. You can keep the cloak. Thanks, brother. You can go ahead and sit down. Thank you so much, Nolan. You can keep the cloak. But I'm going to keep the destiny of God in my life. You can keep the cloak, but I'm going to keep my internal character in check. You can keep the cloak because my integrity means more to me than that thing. And see, I wonder today, what's, what's your cloak? What's the thing that may not be seen in your life, but, but oh, but man, but, but you open it up or you talk to her or you talk to her. But, but man, the moment you get around that cloak, all of a sudden, something different gets to be stirred up inside of you. See, don't, don't justify it. Don't, don't say, is it permissible? Answer the question of where does it eventually lead you? And if it leads you to sin, then, then my God, leave that cloak behind. Because your integrity is worth more than that. So, so that's why for the longest time, and not even saying, and, and I'm healthy, I'm good, praise the Lord, it's going to keep being that way. But guys, can I ask you, that's why for a period of time, I didn't have internet access on my phone, because not because I struggled with it, but because I didn't even want to give devil the devil the, for the foothold in my life, because uh, that's why I don't even have Instagram on my phone. That's why I don't even have Facebook on my I, I don't have those things. And people think it's weird. It's 2021. I get it. But guess what? I'd rather be outdated and have my integrity than be indated and be in 2021. Okay? Yeah. So what's the cloak that you have in your life that you got to get rid of? Get rid of your cloak. And then the last thing that, that Joseph did is this, is that not only did he leave his cloak behind, but notice here that it says then that he ran from the house. He ran from the house. He ran from the house. Where did he run to? He ran out into the open. And it was hilarious because the dude left his cloak, so he was probably buck naked. So he ran out into the open. He was basically saying, look at me. He said, this is me. This is where I'm at. I want to keep myself accountable. I'm not in there doing what you think I'm doing. I'm out here. So, so the third thing that, that we've got to do is that if we want to practice growing your integrity, the third thing we've got to do is we've got to get accountability. We've got to get out in the open. We've got to get around some people who we can be open with, some accountability. You, you guys know that when it, comes to, um, when it comes to goal setting, when it comes to goal setting, did you go, oh, that your, your odds go up of accomplishing those goals 40% if you, if you write them down. So I'm going to lose weight, or I'm not going to, or I'm going to stay away from this. 40% if, if, you, if you write them down. But did you know that the odds of you accomplishing those things go up to 78% if you tell somebody else and they keep you accountable for it? It dramatically goes up whenever you start opening your mouth and get around some people that you can share those things with. So if we're going to be people of integrity, if we're going to be people that, that we build up the inside first, man, we've got to find some people, some community that we can get around and be open and honest with. And see, here's, here's where we're at today is, 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 listen, when it comes to integrity, we got, yeah, at least you can come back up. When it comes to integrity, we got two choices. We can either do it or we can not. You can either take everything that was said today and disregard it. Or we can try to live it out, try to practice it and try to grow it. Um, let, let me share with you these, these, these two stories real quickly about, they're true, they're, they're about both two young kids. And then after that, we'll, we'll, we'll land the plane from there, we'll close it out. But um, there was a young boy, and, and again, true story. Um, there was a young boy who, his dad was a deacon, was a bishop in the church. And uh, grew up in the church, grew up going to church grew up loving the Lord, praising the Lord. And, uh, and one day this, this young boy, he hears this, this weird noise that he's, he's never heard of before. He's never heard before coming out from, uh, from the living room. And so the young boy, he, he ventures out and his dad doesn't know that he's there, but the young boy comes out and his dad was a deacon, who's a bishop, who's a man of God who's been trying to teach his son these godly core values is sitting on the couch 
and the son looks at the TV screen and he basically, see, he didn't know how to describe it at the time, but he was, he was, it was pornographic content. His son was watching his dad look at these, these images, and this content on the screen. His son was watching the dad and the content on the screen. And then he says, you know, he said that, I didn't know what it was at that time, but he said his dad never saw him. But he watched for a little bit, and then he went back to his bed. And then he said, you know, it, it didn't really affect me, you know, then and there he was, it was always, it was always in the back of my mind, he said, but, but growing up, he started to see the way that it affected him. Because he grew up in the church again, they were involved in church. But he said because of that moment or because of that image, he said that he struggled with it a little bit. Because him watching his dad said, I have permission to do that in my life. Because if my dad's a godly man, if my dad's a bishop, then that means that this can't be that bad. And so he struggled with it for a little bit. You know, and eventually this guy, you know, him and I are friends, and that's how I know this story. But eventually he said, I came to that point when I realized that that was wrong. And he said, now that's why he said, I'm fighting every single day. He said, to not, to make sure that that never happens to me and my sons. To make sure that that never happens where my son comes in and stumbles upon me looking at that. He said, because I want my integrity to be his legacy. Now, a different story. Again, a young a young kid. But a different story is that um, my, my daughter, daughter Sophie, um, Alyssa woke up one time and she, and, and I hope you hear my heart. I'm not, I just want to communicate the gospel, okay? So, so Alyssa, one time she came down and she said that Sophie was in the living room and she had her Bible and she had her journal. And Alyssa looked at her and said, Sophie, what are you? What are you doing it's up so early? And then Sophie looked at Alyssa and said, Mommy, I watch Daddy journal and read the Bible every morning. So I want to read the Bible and journal too. And so can you just go upstairs and like leave me alone for like two minutes? And Alyssa started crying. She was like, yeah, baby, do whatever you want to do. And so she went upstairs and then she texted me. She goes, have you ever like, has, do you, did you know that Sophie watches you? And I was like, no. I said, Sophie's walked in on me like once or twice because I would do that. And I said, she's walked in on me once, and twi once or twice, but then, you know, she's always went back to her bed. And she said, let me tell you what happened today. She texted me what happened. And I, I started bawling and crying. Because I was like, dude, that's the legacy I want to leave. So when it comes to integrity, not only does it benefit you because it sustains what the Lord wants to do, but legacy is also, integrity is also the legacy that you're going to eventually leave those people around you. So with this message this morning, man, you have two choices. Either you can disregard it because, man, I'm a weird preacher guy and I'm just telling you some stuff that isn't common today. Or we as people of God, we can live it out. Because see, he, he, here's what I know. Here's the painful truth. And after that, we're going to pray. But here's the painful truth. A lot of us in this room, we are, our, our trajectory was changed at some point. Because maybe of some person's lack of integrity in our lives. But if that person would have been, do you think maybe we would have turned out a little bit but here's the cool thing, though, is that we can't go back and change that. But we can change us now for future generations. That we can be people of integrity. And if you are a person of integrity, then the Lord can trust you with much. And he's going to build up much. And 2021 is going to be your best year yet. And not only are you going to experience all that God has for you, but you're going to experience it not only short term, but long term. Because it's not just about the fruit that comes and goes, but it's about the fruit that lasts. And if we have the integrity to sustain that, then guess what? That fruit is going to last in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's be people of integrity. Amen. So let me go ahead and pray. And then after that, um, Pastor Carl's going to come up here and close us out. Father, we love you. And Jesus, we're thankful because, God, we know that this year, God really does have the potential to be the best year yet. But, Father, if we're going to get there, if we're going to do that, God, if you're going to accomplish that, then, Father, we also know that not only do you look at the outward appearance, but, Father, you look at the heart. 
So Holy Spirit, I pray, would you help us, God, to not only hear your word today, God, but God, would you help us to be men and women, God, who live out integrity every single day of our lives. And so listen, everybody's head bowed, everybody's eyes closed. I just want to ask this question. I'm not going to make you come up. But is there anybody here right now who might say that, that man, that I don't know, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe it's been a while since I've walked with Jesus because here's the thing is that you can't be a man of integrity or a woman of integrity by yourself. It takes the Holy Spirit living inside of you. It takes His presence. And today, man, today's the day that God's saying, listen, I want to be with you. I want to come live with you. I want to be pervasive within you. If that's you this morning, you've never accepted the Lord in your heart. Maybe it's been a while. And today you want to pray that prayer. I'm just going to ask you right where you are. Would you go ahead and raise your hand? And I'm just going to have you pray a prayer with me. Anybody here say, Nate, I want to open up my heart to Jesus. Whether for the first time or for the first time in a long time. Anybody here that you would say, that's me. Jesus, we love you. And Father, we just pray right now, God, that, God, you would help us and empower us, God, to continue to be men and women, Father of integrity, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, what a great word, Pastor Nate. How true is it that, yeah, integrity might cost you a lot, but it costs a whole lot less than the cost of hidden sin. Integrity might cost you a lot, but it costs a whole lot less. And integrity is one of those things that, that blesses you, and it blesses the generations after you. But the opposite will curse you, and it will curse the generations after you. What a great message, Nate. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with us today, if you're new to this discipleship thing, we want to let you know that we have a resource just for you. It's called Fresh Start. It's a seven-day devotional series that the pastors in-house have made for you. And you can get that on our website at clcburg.church slash fresh start. And just a couple more reminders before I let you go. Um, the giving kiosk, uh, the giving receptacles, um, as well as our website, clcburg.church slash give if you're interested in giving today. Um, and if you're new here, please fill out our connect cards. We want to get to know you. We want to make it as easy as possible and hand those into our new here section at the back of the sanctuary. And lastly, lastly, this Friday, I think I said it wrong earlier, this Friday we're doing our all-family worship night, Friday the 12th at 6.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary. We would love to see you. Uh, we want to spend that time with you guys. And uh, I release you today. Have a wonderful day, guys.